Hello all. Regular viewers of this channel might have seen my NCNC or No Computer Numerical Control machine appear in numerous videos. A manual machine I use for flattening and pattern routing using templates for tasks like creating mortise and tenons. It's changed a fair bit as time's gone on and in this video I'd like to share with you my experimenting with adding a rotational axis for light lathe type duties. Usual order of things, starting with the build, then some tests and thoughts to end. I plan for it to be a bolt-on alley profile assembly that will nestle between the main machine's base frame. I suppose you could build something like this as a standalone DIY mini lathe too. All the 20mm profile I'm using is for my recently disassembled mobile benches. That's the beauty of this stuff, it's like Meccano. If your needs or wants change, just take it apart and rebuild anew. I'm using my usual flat sliding T-nuts and corner brackets to construct. I'm sure it doesn't need saying, but whether I show it in the footage or not, everything I fix is painstakingly fixed square. It's a process always worth spending time on. As on a proper lathe, the tailstock end will need to be movable. For this I'm using four V-groove wheels with six mil standoffs. I don't know if there's a trick or proper process to fitting these, but my process is basically as here. I'm setting two wheels on one side square, then locating them in the rail, then fit the other two for the other side, making sure there's good pressure so there's no play, but not so much as they're difficult to move. After several resetting attempts, it runs smooth and true. So to hold the drill, I picked up this Wolfcraft product. It's for drills with 43mm collars, so pretty much all rotary or percussion type drills. I know Fine, Mafel, Matabo and Festool all make a cordless drill with a 43mm collar too. The Wolfcraft mount is plastic and comes with a number of fixings to mount to a bench. That's what it's for really, bench mounting your drill so you can insert a sanding pad to it or something. I noticed a problem with it almost straight away. The clamping bolt has a square nut which is supposed to be held in place by a flat shoulder inside the mount. However, as soon as any force of measure is applied, the square nut still spins despite the shoulder, makes it pretty much unfit for purpose. I went with putting in my own M6 bolt running right through. This will at least allow me to tighten it properly. The drill I'm using is an old Black & Decker, the only one I've got with a 43mm collar. As you can see here, I've added two L brackets to the tailstock platform to sit on the base frame of the main machine, adding a little extra support. I've added the same to the headstock platform too, to allow me to lock the whole assembly in place. Two screws and it's on and ready for use. I have two thumb screws with sliding T-nuts in the back of the tailstock platform, which run in the lathe frame rails, allowing me to lock and unlock. The two L brackets I showed you at the front are essentially rests just to add extra support on the main base frame but can also be locked to keep things extra rigid. On the bench top here you can see the mini tailstock and the pieces I've got together to make a fully adjustable mount for it. Two legs and a platform. I fix one of the legs square leaving the other loose then slide in the platform for the tailstock. Then fix the other leg. I can then bolt on the mini tailstock it and its platform left loose for the time being. To set the tailstock in line with the drill chuck, I remove the little point centre. These aren't Morse tapered, just a straight 6mm shank. In the drill chuck, I have a crown centre, which I bought as an extra, reversed so that the shank can be slid into the tailstock, holding it in position so I can fix everything. After a bit of fiddling about, I'm happy the two meet near as makes no difference perfectly. That's it, built and ready to turn. Not really knowing what I'm doing or how it'd work out, I opted to glue dowels into some pieces for the chuck to hold onto. You can see here on the bench top there's a few chips laying around. You will in a minute see my genuinely first attempt at turning with this machine. The setup footage I filmed later, but makes sense to show it first, if that makes sense. It's a typical setup really. Tailstock slid in place to meet the workpiece and tightened down with the thumb screws. I decided to go with screwing down the L bracket supports at the front too. Belt and braces until I get used to using it I think. Then I used the tailstock adjustment to apply some pressure for secure work holding. Despite its tiny size, this mini tailstock will telescope a full 40mm. Although my old B&D drill has a power lock on button, it doesn't have a speed adjustment dial, just a responsive trigger. So to keep it at a manageable speed, I use a clamp for the trigger and apply pressure until I'm happy with the speed. Not ideal, but works for now. So this was my first turn with the machine. I'm using a CMT spiral up cut in the router. I haven't done enough tests yet to know if it's the best choice, but I find it an excellent all-rounder, so why not? I made up several of these little columns, 
made from the hundreds of offcuts I have from all the bridle joints I've been doing for my Marcel Brewer inspired pieces. I've never used use them but thought they'd be interesting to look at for the purpose of this video. I took about 12 passes to round this piece. I have to be honest, although I'm really happy with how it works, I was a bit surprised at how reluctant it is to cut anything more than a millimetre per pass. I thought it would chomp through effortlessly. More experiments with different cutters definitely needed. Any of you have bits to recommend, by all means do let me know below. I should say as well that I have thumb screw stops on every axis of the main machine to limit movement. You can see them in the footage. These stop me getting carried away and running into the drill or tailstock. The result is pretty good, especially considering these off-cut pieces mean it's cutting hardwood, oak, mahogany and purple heart, end grain. No real interesting patterns come to be, but they still look kind of cool, and pretty uniformly round, which is the point. For another test, and to demonstrate more uses for this setup, I've got a piece of pine 2x2 fitted. This will hopefully let me know what it's like cutting more typically across the grain, as well as how it handles a larger piece. In terms of size by the way, this has the capacity to turn a piece 600mm in length and 80mm in width. I wouldn't say I noticed any difference in the way it cut hardwood end grain to softwood cross grain. But how accurate is it? Well, on this piece I measure 39.06mm one end and 3868 the other. Within about 3 tenths over 300mm is as good as I was hoping for. I mentioned earlier that I pre-glued dowels to my demo pieces for the chuck to hold. This isn't the way to go to achieve consistent accuracy I think. So I'll do the more usual turning practice of cutting a tenon into the material as shown here using the crown centre in the drill chuck to grip the piece initially. With a proper tenon, I notice straight away how much straighter the piece is gripped when the chucks tighten. Here I set stops to limit movement on the Y axis to well within the piece. There's also a clamp on the drill chuck to lock it in place. In the router, I've got a round core bit to attempt some fluting you might see on table or chair legs. Just a straight up and down cut, but a useful feature of this setup I think. I just set the position by eye, but you could mark the end of the piece and align it to a corresponding cursor on the machine somewhere. Seems to work well. Continuing with the table leg theme, this setup also allows for the machining of a shoulder and some sort of mortise after turning to fix the legs to aprons. Again with the chuck locked with the clamp, I create a flat spot or shoulder first. Then I swap to a dovetail bit in the router to create a mortise. The bit looks perilously close to the chuck I know, but stops are set on the machine to prevent me running into anything. And there we go, that's a fair bit of potential having a rotational axis for the machine I think. The tailstock end I'm really happy with, it's solid, moves easily, locks well and the mini tailstock itself works an absolute treat for its size. The headstock or drill end, not so much. The Wolfcraft drill holder really isn't solid enough for this use. I'll have to get another mount from Ooze Nest like that on my Z axis I think, I was just being a bit cheap. The drill is also not ideal. I may see if I can find an old Bosch or something of this type, as they not only have a trigger lock, but also a speed dial, so I can do away with the faff of the clamp. Despite that, I couldn't be happy with the trial runs. It's a nice little addition to an already versatile machine, and one that I can attach and remove as a whole assembly. Very little setup required. I'm sure you'll see it busy in other videos this year. I'll make sure videos on the machine pop up at the end if you're interested in seeing its other uses. 
I'll also put links below to the Wolfcraft drill holder and mini tail stock in the description. As always, thoughts, comments and questions welcome below and thanks for watching.